All right, so we put another force operator inside of here. We want to get that gravity in here again. <coughs> so as um, I'm just going to lower the count. It's not slowing me down. It's just uh, maybe a little confusing for people that aren't really familiar with this. <coughs> we'll set it to 10. Um, so now when the particles hit, you get a little bounce, and the bounce is caused by the speed by surface. And of course, again, we're going just by the surface of this plane we put in earlier. Uh, we can set that. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's set that. Again, we'll leave that at 300, 150. Also, since this is a collision spawn, we can set how many particles we want to spawn on the collision. Right now, it's set to 1. Which means that every one particle that hits is only going to create one other particle in its place. Alright, what we want to do is uh, we'll raise that to 5. So now every one particle that collides from um, the initial droplet to the first contact will create 5 particles in its place. All right, so now that we have that, we can see that they're following in a straight path along where, you know, the uh, the parent was. So again, we can we can cause a little randomness in that by first we'll hit new. And we can also set the divergence again. I like to set this to 45 all the way up to 90 cuz 90 obviously would mean they go directly out sideways also some of them. And for collision spawn, we'll actually raise this to 10 with a variation of 50. Again, I'm cutting it in half. And we will up the speed a little bit. Now we'll let it be. <coughs> And we'll put another collision inside of this. I'll put a below force collision by list here, deflector again. And instead we'll change the collision to two times. That means it has to hit the deflector two times in order to move to the next event. And right from collision, the second one we put in, I'm going to put in just a speed operator. And I'm going to connect that. And we see that it brings up these particles um, down here, uh, like a burnt orange. I'm just going to set the speed to zero to make sure they stop all together. And again, I'm going to make this, we can make this, uh, well, we'll leave it ticks now, and then we'll just change it to white so we can see it better. So what do we have? We have particles moving through different um, uh, events. We'll rename event four to stay put. The particles will stop there. And um, you basically have your effect. All you want to do now is maybe make it to where you want to see it. Like uh, you want to just uh, customize it to fit whatever you want. For example, uh, this is not very exciting, is it? Now, I want my, my splash to be bigger, my splatter to be bigger. I want it to go out further, so I'm going to turn up the speed here to 800. So the particles really fly, 400, variation. And also, I want to raise this to, let's say, uh, 40. So now we have a pretty good whack, whack. And the particles are really cruising. And 
And this might have worked better as if they were all lines. <laughs> might, might look better. Except for the last one, we'll leave ticks. Let, let's let's make these uh, display things lines. You get more of an understanding of the movement that way. Lines. Well, you know what I actually do? Just so they update together, I'm going to hold down shift and drag this on top of this one. I'm going to make it an instance. So they change together now. Like uh, if I can, I can um, select this one separately and change it to whatever I want. But these ones now are instances. So whatever one I change here will change the other one. And once they hit the ground there and they do their secondary hops, it's not too exciting, is it? So we can raise the speed of that as well uh, somewhere around 500 is fine uh, I'll set that to 300 then now let's set that to 150 you have to remember this the sum of these numbers will be the the total distance of which your furthest particle can travel do you understand what I mean so you don't want them going too far but you do uh you do want them having some distance. Okay, so let's look let's look specifically at this particle right here. Um as we see it hit, it makes contact right, it leaves the um the uh the ticks as it should. I don't like that spread though, that's too spread for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the divergence under my speed here to Say twenty five. So they kinda leave a little you know it looks like trails almost, which you know, a good splatter needs. Maybe up that to thirty. And also I want to change my particle spawn to let's say twenty five. Uh Spawnable means how many particles, like um, if this initial shot here shot out, well, let's use this uh, actual example, we'll say 40. If I then changed the spawnable to 50%, that means only 20 of those particles will go to the next stage. As opposed now, if we had 100, we get all of them. And we're, of course, we're going to use 100 because we want particles. <laughs> Maybe we shot those out a little too far. Let's bring these in a little bit. Let's say 600 by 300. Again, you can do whatever you feel is best for whatever you want to do. Again, I'm just trying to keep it simple for the tutorial. Um, we can make that zero if you want. And you get a, a, an even spread. That's if you want it. Uh, you can do anything. I'm just here to give you um, the foundation work so that you can become a P-Flow master. 